Welcome back to downtown St. Pete and to our fall episode of What's New in 22. It's a Friday in October, the weather is amazing, and it's great to see so many people out and about. It's also really great to see so many food and drink spots continuing to pop up around town. So in this episode, we're gonna take you to several of them. We're also gonna give you an update on some services that we are really excited about. But first, we're gonna grab some dinner. This episode of What's New in 22 is sponsored by Abruzzi's Hot Peppers. And us, we're Jamie and Skylar, and we've lived in downtown St. Pete for nearly three years. During that time, we visited over 30 new drink and dining spots in and around downtown. So join us as we add a few more to that list today. Our Friday night dinner spot took us to 17 3rd Street North, where you'll find the Black Cattle Burger Company. Opened in September of 22, this locally owned and operated burger joint serves up unique smash burgers, as well as chicken sandwiches. It smells really good in here. Within about eight minutes of ordering, our food had arrived. Oh, well, those are thick fries. Yeah. So I got the Yardbird, which comes with barbecue aioli, pickles, and also Alabama white sauce, which is a horseradish mayo. And I got the Black Pearl, which is a double cheeseburger with pickles, grilled mushrooms, and garlic aioli. But first, we had to try the thick cut fries, which were fresh, crispy, and paired perfectly with the Alabama white sauce. We found Black Kettle's focus on locally sourced ingredients to be apparent, as both the chicken sandwich and the burger were delightfully fresh and flavorful. So I gotta say that burger was one of the best burgers I've had in a while. The meat was a little bit crispy and juicy, the bun was soft, and those mushrooms were delicious. Now one thing that might have made it just a little bit better is some hot peppers from this week's sponsor of Bruzies. And we're going to tell you a bit about those right now. So we received our very first shipment of a Bruzies peppers and oil a couple of weeks ago. And because we had never tried peppers and oil before, we had no idea how to use them. So I started off simple by putting the peppers on a frozen pizza and they made that mediocre pizza so much better. Since then we've been putting the peppers on everything, including burgers, steaks, nachos, and a caprese salad. Now one thing I love about these peppers is that they contain only five ingredients with the main one being farm grown peppers from Ohio and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And I also love that they have the perfect amount of heat. Now I have to admit, the hot peppers are a little too hot for me, but Abruzzi's also makes sweet peppers, which I absolutely love. And another thing that I love is that they ship directly to your front door, which in our case is right here in downtown St. Pete. Now if you're ready to order these delicious peppers for yourself, just visit abruzzi'shotpeppers.com. Now let's get back to this episode. So now that we've had dinner, Jamie says it's time to get dessert, and she sure has no shortage of spots to choose from around here. But one of those spots literally just opened up today, so that's where we're heading to next. I am ready for some ice cream. Located at 111 2nd Avenue Northeast, ice cream lovers will find their spot at the yard. So Skylar is behind me right now shooting some B-roll footage. He has not yet seen the menu to this next place and it is definitely going to be the most expensive milkshake that we have ever purchased. And he's probably not gonna be happy about it. Hello, yeah. what's the channel name? Exploration. Ex Exploration, yeah. I like that. Yeah, we're gonna go to this yard place here. Have okay. you guys been? We haven't. We arrived at the yard on the night of its grand opening where we found some mouth-watering dessert options, including edible cookie dough, and of course, ice cream. And we didn't have to wait too long for our masterpiece of a milkshake to arrive. I think that's us. Oh my gosh, look at how cute that is. So this is the mermaid. We've got birthday cake ice cream. We've got some mermaid crumble here. And there's a rock candy. And this tail is made of white chocolate. What do you think? <laughs> we later learned that the glass jar which these milkshakes come in can be taken home, making the $17 price tag a little bit more reasonable. And while still not happy about the price, Skylar had to admit that the milkshake was good, especially the white chocolate mermaid tail. The yard has been expanding rapidly since appearing on Shark Tank in 2019 and has grown to over 20 locations nationwide. The new St. Pete location is the yard's fifth in Florida and the second in the Tampa Bay area. 
So we just left the yard and my milkshake was really delicious and it was also the prettiest and most elaborate milkshake that I've ever had. And I gotta be honest, I was not too excited about spending $17 on a milkshake, but it was the yard's grand opening and I'm sure you all wanted to see what a 17 buck milkshake looked like. Now hopefully I'll never have to spend $17 on a milkshake again, but I would definitely still go back to the yard to try some of their less expensive dessert options. So we've got one last stop tonight before we pick back up in the morning. Now thankfully this place is a little bit more budget friendly and it's actually been around St. Pete for years and was one of our favorite spots before we even moved to St. Pete. It did close for six months prior to moving just a few blocks away to its new location. So technically it is kind of new. Plus we just really want to go there so we'll see you there next. And that spot is Ringside Cafe. Now located at 350 First Avenue North, Ringside has been a staple of St. Pete for over 30 years and is one of our go-to spots for live music, a laid-back atmosphere, and some reasonably priced drinks with a great happy hour running from 3 to 7 daily. Visitors to Ringside will find great drink specials and live music six nights a week. And if you come late on a weekend, you'll likely find one of several high-energy rock bands that frequent the Ringside stage. And we couldn't have been happier to end our night with Scream Machine, the ultimate 80s arena rock tribute band. Good morning. It is a slightly chilly but beautiful Saturday here in St. Pete. Now we have so much more to show you, so let's get going. If you're enjoying this video so far, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. But for now, it's time to grab some coffee. Our cravings for caffeine took us to 260 First Avenue South, where inside the station house, you'll find Bad Mother Specialty Coffee Bar. Open since August, Bad Mother offers a variety of coffees and specialty drinks, plus parfaits and an assortment of baked goods. We learned that Bad Mother is a multi-roaster cafe featuring coffee from a different roaster every six weeks. Our order included the vanilla and pumpkin spice lattes, and both came out looking and smelling delicious. We found both drinks to contain the perfect amount of espresso and to be flavorful without being too sugary. So we just left Bad Mother, and while I've never had a pumpkin spice latte that I didn't like, I have to say that one was especially good. Yeah, and what stood out to me about this place is that they make all of their syrups in-house, which a lot of the coffee shops around here use the store-bought stuff, which is often overly sweet. Our second stop of the day took us just a couple blocks east from Bad Mother. Here in the parking lot of Al Lang Stadium, you'll find the Saturday morning market which just recently relocated from its summer spot in Williams Park. With over 140 vendors, the St. Pete Market is one of the 20 largest in the country and the largest in the Southeast U.S. It's also where you'll find one of our favorite local products, Eden's Nectar Raw Honey. With over 40 types of honey coming in a variety of forms and sizes, all of Eden's honey is locally produced in Western Florida. So every year we make a point to swing by and get some of this honey because it is some of our favorite. Now because of the hurricane, we did learn that this year's supply is limited, so if you want this specific honey, you're going to have to ask for it. Next up was a quick stop through Tropical Sea Sponges, a family-owned sponge diving operation out of Tarpon Springs. And after a bit of searching, Skylar found the perfect sponge. On our way out, we spotted another familiar business in the Bloody Mary experience, which we can tell you makes some amazing Bloody Mary mix from our experiences in prior videos. Our third stop of the day was just a half mile walk to the north of the Saturday morning market. I really love October in St. Pete because it finally starts to cool down and it's just really comfortable walking around. So right behind me and just a couple of blocks up the road from the Saturday market at Elang Stadium is the access point to the Cross Bay Ferry, which also just recently returned to downtown St. Pete. Now in a future episode, we do plan to take the Cross Bay Ferry over to Tampa. So if you have any recommendations for us in downtown Tampa, leave those in the comments below. For those of you who are new to our channel, 
This is the seventh of our What's New in St. Pete series, and if you're interested in seeing many more spots that are new to St. Pete over the last couple of years, then check out our Discover St. Pete playlist after this video. Now for lunch, we're actually going to the exact same building that we had coffee at this morning. After a couple miles of walking, and with nothing but coffee in our bellies, we sure were ready for some food, and there was no doubt that our next stop would have what we were looking for. Located at 260 First Avenue South, on the lower level of the station house, Good Fortune is the newest Asian fusion spot in downtown St. Pete. We were happy to find Good Fortune's menu to include a selection of rice and noodle dishes, small plates, a variety of sushi rolls, specialty cocktails, and Japanese whiskey and sake. And after around a 15 minute wait, our order was ready. Skylar went with the miso ramen, while I went with the coconut curry salmon, and both came out looking fantastic. While Skylar and I both enjoyed my coconut curry salmon, we were in agreement that the ramen was our favorite. But even more so than the food, we both really enjoyed the atmosphere at Good Fortune, as well as the exceptional service. We also discovered that Good Fortune has its very own karaoke room, where you and your friends can sing your hearts out in style for a two hour session. We just finished up our lunch at Good Fortune and we really love the atmosphere at that place. We did enjoy our entrees as well, but my favorite was definitely the ramen, specifically the short rib that was in that ramen. It was super tender and flavorful. Now you may have already noticed from this video so far that we are not out and about on our scooters today. And that's because there is a brand new way of getting around in downtown St. Pete. And I'm guessing many of you already know what that is. And what we're talking about is, of course, the long-awaited Sunrunner, which we found to be extremely popular on just its second day of operation. After just a couple minute wait, our bus had arrived, and while we were a bit nervous that there would be no space for us on this bus, we managed to fit in just fine. We just got off of the Sun Runner and we're not going to show you that full experience in this video because later on we're going to do a whole episode on riding it from downtown all the way out to St. Pete Beach. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe to the channel and have the notifications turned on. As far as this video, we still have two more stops to take you. And thanks to the free ride to the Grand Central District, our dinner spot would only be a short walk away. But first, we'd have to kill some time and work up an appetite. And what a better place to do that than our favorite city, St. Pete. A few hours later, we still weren't too hungry, but we were still excited to check out our dinner spot, Good Intentions. We found the interior of the Quonset Hut building to be incredibly spacious, with tall arched ceilings and a bit of a 1970s vibe. here about 20 minutes after this place opened and it was already busy so even though it's a new spot it's already really popular. We found the drink menu to offer a good variety of craft cocktails and to Skylar's liking some local beers. While the food menu was a bit on the smaller side we found the prices to be pretty reasonable and had no problem finding something to order. Our server at Good Intentions was awesome and we had our orders in no time despite the restaurant being packed. And while we both agreed that our orders didn't look exactly like real meat, we were excited to try them. First up was my Italian beef sandwich, which came with a side of fries and au jus. And in case you can't tell from my expression, it was really good. Next up was Skylar's sausage and shishito pepper sandwich, with a little hot sauce for good measure. And we should mention, this was Skylar's first time ever trying imitation meat. I think it's safe to say he enjoyed it, considering he ate most of his sandwich and most of mine. Oh, man. Right? Do you know any great new downtown food and drink spots that we haven't yet visited in our series? 
If so, let us know in the comments. We just love good intentions, and I know we've had some viewers ask for more vegan spots in St. Pete, so when I saw that it opened, I knew that we would have to go, but I also knew that Skylar would probably be a little bit skeptical. And I really was. I had read some reviews on that place. I knew it was going to be good, but I did not think their meat substitute dishes would taste like real meat. But I got to admit, I was wrong. Both the sausage sandwich and that beef sandwich not only tasted like real meat, but I would say that beef sandwich was actually better than the vast majority of beef sandwiches I have had. So not only would I recommend that place to a vegan, but also to a carnivore like myself. So before we hit our last spot, we do want to address something and that is the cost of living here in downtown St. Pete. As many of you probably noticed things around downtown are getting more expensive and this was easily the most money we've spent on making a what's new in St. Pete video so far. And on top of that, we just recently received notice from our apartment complex that our rent's gonna be going up by around 20%. And that's after having it raised by around 20% last year. Now we still absolutely love St. Pete, but the reality is it might be getting too expensive to live downtown and in a few months, we might be moving. So if any of you have any connections to any affordable rentals, then send us an email. And as far as these videos go, we can't tell you what the future will bring. But one thing I can tell you for sure is that we're not going to be buying any more $17 milkshakes. <laughs> All right, enough about that. Let's get to our last spot for today. So this next location we've actually visited in a prior episode, but it's changed ownership and it's a whole new concept. So we're going to go back. Our last stop of the day took us to 685 Central Avenue, where you'll find Cheeky Churros. After a fun but rather expensive day in downtown St. Pete, we were happy to find that this spot was extremely friendly on the budget. After checking out some insightful Cookie Monster quotes, we made our way to the back patio, where we were happy to find that the new owners had kept one of our favorite St. Pete murals intact. Back inside, we were delighted to find that our churro order was ready. While the churros looked pretty much like your typical churro, we have to say that these churros were the best churros we've ever had. Yeah, it's more like kind of doughy, like a donut. Yeah, oh, really good. Want to see even more of the best new businesses around downtown St. Pete? Then click on this video next. Thanks for watching.